Hi guys, uh, welcome to Isha Training Solutions. Uh, now, uh, in this session, I'm going to show you how to handle this .js files using Load Runner, uh, using VHN. A lot of people, uh, you know, have this doubt, like, you know, how do I handle it, you know, when it comes to .js files. So, um, let me limit myself to, you know, let's not get into what is this uh, .js files and all that. Um, you know, maybe you can do some research on that. Uh, but uh, uh, to be honest, you know, let's concentrate more on where do I get to use this .js files a lot, okay? This could be asked as an interview question, whatever I'm posting, or you might face some challenges. Sometimes what happens is the very first request, okay? Very first request, okay? You need to correlate. You need to correlate usually it will be the second or third request because in the first request in the response to the first request you know uh, uh, you have some value which you have to correlate in the second request that's what happens and uh, it's pretty straightforward that you can handle because you go capture the response of the first request and then put it in the second request and that's how you correlate it but sometimes what happens is the very first request itself you have a dynamic value and you need to correlate it so where is that response or where is that dynamic value that you that you get it so that you can capture and do it you know since it's a first request obviously you cannot correlate this so in these cases typically what I have seen is there will be a .js file okay when we run this .js file okay so uh, basically when we run this uh, .js file output will be okay output will be a dynamic value output will be a, a dynamic value which we can use it in the first request i'm just giving an example it could happen in the second request third request fourth request as well and when you go up further i mean let's say you you happen to see a dynamic value in the third request okay so let's say you have a web request one uh, web request two and web request three okay so you have some dynamic value over here okay uh, which you have to correlate you searched in the response of web request two you search in the response of web request one you don't see that dynamic value anywhere then probably that dynamic value that you are supposed to correlate could be okay could be an output of a .js file output of a .js file basically this dynamic value is generated by a client-side program called .js okay it is happening or it is a program which runs on the client side not on the server side so you have an output and you have to deal with it so this is what it is you need not have to be on the first request it could happen anywhere and you are not able to figure out where is that response or you know you're not able to figure out how to correlate it because you're not able to find it in any response typically in those cases it could be coming from a .js file usually this uh, javascripts or .js files execute on the client side that's why you don't see in the response of any of those requests uh, hopefully that makes sense to you okay now i don't have this situation where a dynamic value is generated on the client side or by the dot js file uh, js file and you have to correlate i don't i don't i, I was not able to uh, find any uh, application uh, to demonstrate that but however okay however um, i figured out a way wherein you know i could find a dot js file um, you know which is a generic dot js file and when you have a .js file how to handle it you know i'm going to show it to you so <clears throat> now this is a .js file i could find it online now um i'm gonna uh, tell you what this .js file is gonna do and then how we can run it from future and one more thing in my project okay in my project kumar okay in my project how do i okay in my project how do I okay get this .js file? How do I get this okay .js file? Should I go and approach the uh, developer? Please give me the .js file. 
um, you know, I figured out that the dynamic value is coming from the .js file, then how do I get this .js file? Should I talk to the developer? No. Typically, in all the projects I was involved in, uh, just open any website, okay? Let me open my Facebook, okay? Just press F12. <coughs> if there is a .js file, it will show up. You see the type here? So in this request, if there is a .js file which the server has sent it to the client, which the client is supposed to run it on its side, okay, the .js file will be, will be shown up here. All you do is, okay, I don't see any .js file here, but if there is a .js file, just right click on it and you say download and you will be able to download the .js file, okay? And once you download, you would be able to see something like this. Okay, but here obviously this Facebook doesn't have this .js file, so I couldn't, but it's very simple, you can do that. Okay, now I got the .js file. Now let me see how we can run this, you know, JavaScript file on the um, load. Okay, before I'm running it, let's try to understand what is this. Okay, it is simple uh, JS file which will create a random credit card number. You see, it's a random credit card number generator. Okay, so there are multiple functions here. This particular function will generate a 16 digit uh, random number for a visa, visa typically 16. And there is one more function, which is again, it will generate a visa, uh, which is 13, okay, 13 digit, this particular function. And this particular function will generate for a MasterCard and this particular function will generate for a uh, Discover. Okay, in the same file, there are four functions. Four functions is for different types of the cards. Now, I wanted to run this .js file and then I wanted to run this function, okay, and generate a 16 digit Visa credit card number. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna, I want to do that. It's very, very simple, brother. So just open your ViewGen. <coughs> a lot of people get overwhelmed by this, a lot of questions I'm getting. So that's why I thought, you know, I'll just create a new script altogether. Okay, so, uh, let me create a uh, script. Okay, first import that file. Okay, create a new file. No, import a file. Okay, import that .js file. Add the files to the script. Uh, it is there on my desktop. Uh, random. What was the name? Hang on. What was the name of the function? Credit card. C. Yeah, this one. Double click on it and then make sure that particular file is added. Okay. So here the file is added. Now I can use the reference to this file. Uh, I did not have to give the path and I did not have to say that go to the C drive, go to my desktop and get the file from where because I've already added that file into my script. Now what I wanted to do, I wanted to run this program. Okay. Sorry. I wanted to run this program called, uh, I, I wanted to run this function called CC Gen Visa 16. Okay, it's straightforward guys. For that, there is a function called web underscore JS underscore control space run this one. Okay, now I can go and press F7 and get the syntax of it. I think that's the best way. Press click anywhere on this function and press F1. So obviously it will go and give you what this web underscore js underscore run would do you can go and try to understand a lot of documentation is here okay interestingly we can use this for the true client as well okay now i'm gonna go to the example okay now for maybe this one here okay or maybe this one here running a code okay so i'm gonna copy this okay so make this easy for me okay so there you go okay Now, <clears throat> the file in this web underscore js underscore run, you wanted to run a code, okay? But that code is there in which file? The file name is credit card underscore js, okay? I need to copy this, press F2, copy, and this is the file, okay? Uh-oh, it didn't copy it, hang on one second. F2, copy, yeah. Now. I wanted to run a function which is there in this file, okay, which is good. And in this file, credit card generated.js, which function you wanted to run? There are four functions here. This is the function one, this is function two, this is function three, 
and function for. Let's say I wanted to run this. Okay, let's run the first function itself because that's what we have been talking. I wanted to generate a 16 digit random number for a Visa credit card. That's the function I wanted to run. Okay, so what I'm saying here in this particular file, I'm running this function and the output, where should I store it? I would store it in a, okay, random Visa 16 digit number okay this is an LR parameter this is the LR parameter name in which I'll be storing the output when you run this particular function which is part of this file that there will be some output that output will be stored in this LR parameter called random visa 16 digit number okay cool uh, let's go ahead and run it first uh, let me compile this <coughs> No errors detected. Okay, so let me do a step by step this uh, execution. <coughs> okay, so again, whenever I execute this, as soon as I execute it, it will go to this file, it will go to this function, execute this function, the output will be stored in this LR parameter. And I wanted to see the value of this LR parameter. You know where you have to go to go to runtime data. Okay, in the runtime data uh, right now you don't see this LR parameter because I haven't executed this, and this parameter didn't come into ex come into existence because I haven't executed this. But as soon as I execute this piece of code, this particular LR parameter comes into existence, and you will be able to see the value here. <coughs> okay. Okay, so there seems to be a small minor problem here, brother. Web.js run, okay, this particular function requires that a Java <coughs> script engine be enabled in the runtime settings. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, this seems to, uh, I haven't gotten this error before, but let's go ahead and uh, quickly do this. So go to runtime settings, okay. <coughs> let me figure out where this one Java script engine, okay. So let me see where that particular thing is there, JavaScript engine. Um, okay, let me pause this recording for now. So uh, guys, I quickly uh, could figure it out. You see, enable running JavaScript code. So I've enabled this one here now. Okay, hopefully it's getting recorded. Yeah, it's getting recorded. Uh, so now I'll go ahead and run it. <coughs> go to the runtime data. Okay, now you see, oh, the whole thing, the whole program is executed. So let me fix this guys, one second. So yes, it's been a while I've done it. So I'm doing, I've been doing silly mistakes, not an issue. So as you can see here, it is a function earlier. This is how it was and then it got confused. Since it is a function, you know, there should be an open braces and closed braces. If you go back and uh, check this uh, thing as well, as you can see the function, it, it always, whenever there is a function, you know, this open and uh, uh, close braces will be there, which I missed out to be honest. So uh, yeah, I, I have added that one. So a couple of things, once you go to the runtime settings and then enable the JavaScript here, running JavaScript code. And one is <coughs> when you add that function, uh, don't forget that basis. Okay, <coughs> now lo let me go ahead and run it. <coughs> there you go. So now this LR parameter called random visa 16 digit number came into existence and the output of this particular function is stored here. Later on, you can use it the way you want. Now you got it into an LR parameter. You can convert to an integer using LR eval string and then, you know, um, then you play around, add the number, divide the number, or you can do a simple output, LR output message, and then output that particular thing. You can just do whatever you want. Okay, so Kumar, just let's just out of curiosity, I also wanted to run this next function as well. Maybe this discovery function. Okay, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, discover function as well. Can we do it? Why not? Okay, just take this, copy paste the same thing. It's the same file. Okay, 
and now the function name varies just copy the new function name okay and then random this is discover okay and then is it 16 digits uh, let me look at this piece of code yes the length is 16 so this is a 16 digit number that will be generated and I will be stored in a LR parameter called random discover 16 digit and let's go ahead and run this <coughs> and go to the runtime data as you can see random discover 16 digit and a 16 digit number is generated so this is as simple as this guys you know web JSON run which file your JSON code is or you can write your own code here instead of writing the code into a .js file and add it into an extra file um, you know just write your whole code here that is also works and then call that code or call that function in the code there should be a function call that function here and every function should have an output that output will be stored in this LR parameter and once you have it in the LR parameter you can do whatever you want you can convert to integers strings you can output it you can pass it into the next uh, request you can do uh, whatever the hell you want okay so this is how you can handle this dot chess file a lot of people get overwhelmed with this it's actually straightforward and simple okay so um, how do I get it I told you go to the developer tools and then for that request server will send that .js file to the client where the client will be executing that .js file so in the developer tools you can download it or you can talk to the developer they will provide this .js files and also the logic inside it how it works and how many functions are there you can look at it and call those functions here and uh, yes if you are executing this web services and there is no way for you they have already integrated this .js files into your postman or something just go talk to the developers get this .js files and run it just the way I have done hopefully this video will be useful to you guys and definitely this is an interview question or if not an interview question you can post this as a scripting challenge that you have faced okay and explain about this and then say that using this web underscore js underscore run I have uh, handled this particular challenge you can talk about it thank you guys please please stay tuned and then there are wonderful courses that we have been introducing guys yeah, just and uh, we have uh, um, revamped our website as well isha training solutions have a look at it we have cloud performance engineering performance engineering dynatrace new relic app dynamics and there is one more wonderful course that we are introducing guys that is database performance tuning for performance engineers i'm very excited about that course probably in a month or so it should be there and mr roshan who is very very smart guy um, he's designing this lucky to have him as a trainer and uh, yes and then Krushik you know and then uh, Krushik is designing a wonderful course as well which is how to break a low runner interview trust me okay there will be 100 interview questions and the course it's an it's not it's not a book it's not it's not um, any document but it's a it's a course it's a live sessions course that Krushik is designing a uh, wonderful guy uh, good knowledge on low runner so he should be coming out with this course pretty soon anyways thank you guys take care uh, bye -bye.